So I'm joined by the now Oscar-nominated director, Marianne Farley, uh, who's responsible for the short film Marguerite. Uh, if you haven't seen it, uh, do try and hunt it out. It's a really moving uh, tale of, of an old lady and her nurse. Uh, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Liam. Thank you. Uh, first of all, congratulations. Thank you. It, sound, it still sounds so crazy <laughs> when I hear people say Oscar-nominated director. It's, it's, it's such a... a it's quite quite a ride, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. How did you find out? Well, we were the whole team. We were together, and and we found out just um, on live, live on ABC. I guess it was on TV. Yeah. Were you kind of expecting the nomination because the film has done pretty well uh, up to now? Um, honestly, I try not to. I try not to go on the internet too much, and I, I try not to focus on on that stuff just because I really wanted to put all my energy into you know doing my work and talking about yes. the film and just you know talking about content and because that's that's the most important thing to me and I know that the rest I have no control over whether whether the you know the the people the academy <clears throat> whether they, they decide to support the film or not that I have no control over. So I try to really just, you know, concentrate on what I do have control over, which is, um, which is my work. Sure. I mean, so tell us about the film then. Like, what, what inspired you to, to tell this story? Well, you know, I get, I get asked that a lot. And, you know, my, the, I guess the, the quickest um, answer would be just realizing how fortunate I was to have been born in the 1970s and not in the 1920s as a woman. And, um, you know, that was what sparked the idea because my grandmother who, who was born in the 1920s was not able to, um, have, have the same kind of life, um, as I had. And, um, just because, you know, I mean, at that time you had to get married and have kids and, and work for your husband. That was your job. So there were no alternatives. And, you know, s starting from that premise and then just, you know, elaborating on that and realizing, oh, well, you know, um, LGBTQ rights were absolutely, I mean, Canada being gay was, was um, criminal until like 1969. So, you know, like they, at least 10,000 people went to jail for loving somebody of the same sex, which, which is something that has always been mind-boggling to me it's madness isn't it yeah yeah it's just it, it's really it's really sad and it just I don't know why the idea of Marguerite being this this woman who was never able to you know almost on her deathbed realizes that she could have had a different life and she could have she could have been a lot happier but because of society standards had to had to pretend to be somebody she wasn't deep down inside did you find it easy to get the the backing for this film now because we're, we're kind of in a, in a period where um sort of a focus on lgbtq uh, rights and and telling those stories is um i don't want to say the 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 zeitgeist but there's there's certainly a a really strong focus on telling those stories now well you know in quebec the thing in quebec canada that we have public funding so it's government agencies who fund films or you do it yourself with friends and, you know, whatever money you can scrape up. Mm -hmm. um, they really, they base their decisions on the script, on the content. So, and of course, you know, depending on how many, how many scripts they get, you know, that, that have the same themes or have the same, you know, and, and they do try to uh, have a certain, you know, amount of, they try to be, to have parity as much as possible as well. So I think, I think the timing was good in Quebec uh, for, for that film. I think they really love the script. I think, you know, in, because I have a background also as an actress and it was my second film. I think they were just, the timing was just, was just perfect for, for Marguerite. And mm -hmm. I, I was very lucky actually, because I only had to submit twice and I got the funding. Usually you have to submit like, four or five times you know yeah that, i mean that that that's awesome and having seen the film i i'm very glad that, that you're able to get it made because it's a it's a really moving film um and oh thank you you're welcome and, and, and i was just wondering did, were, were you ever tempted to to make a, a feature-length version of that or, or did it just feel right to tell as a as a short 
I did think about it. I did. I did think about that, but I, I was really. I wanted to. I was ready to make a, a, a second short film. It, that actually, when I had the idea for the first short film I shot, uh, Ransack, I had I had two ideas. It was Ransack and it was Marguerite. And I started with Ransack, and I really felt like Marguerite had to come out of me. You know, it had to. I had to bring it to the screen. It was very sort of like vital to me that it, that I get it done. And then I started thinking, you know, this could be a feature film, but getting a feature film made takes like five years at least. And I'm not very patient. So, <laughs> so for me it was like, okay, let's just, let's, let's just do it. It, yeah. it, it really, it really felt natural for me to do it like now timing wise. So since getting the film made then, uh, like when did you actually finish it and what was the process sort of following that? We shot it, I think it was end of 2016. So it was like two years ago. I'm wondering if, it, yeah, yeah, exactly. So two, 2016 in December. And then we did the post-production and all of that. And the film, you know, we started submitting it to festivals in probably May or June of 2017. And to be, you know, quite honest, it took a long time before we got the first selection. It's it's a pretty long short film. It's like 19 and a half minutes. And um, yeah, so many, a lot of festivals, I guess, turned it down because it was a bit too too long. It's, it's just harder to fit into a, a program, mm -hmm. festival program. So, but then as soon as, you know, as soon as we, we won a prize, then, you know, then festivals started opening up and going, oh, this film must be good. <laughs> you know, it, it, there, as soon as there's like a buzz that's created, I guess people, um, they pay closer attention to it, yeah. which which is, it, is the normal process. I think it's hard for a film like Marguerite because it's a slow film. It's a slow paced film. Yeah. It talks about, you know, it's not a sexy, edgy film. It's, it's, it's very much um, a film that talks about compassion and about love, but a different kind of love. And uh, it talks about regret. And you have to watch the whole film to get the story. You know, in the mm -hmm. beginning, you think it's the it's a film about this old woman who's lonely. And I think a lot of short films have been made about that. And, um, I, I, you know, I don't know if all the festivals watch the films from beginning to end when they receive like 2000 films and they mm -hmm. have like two weeks to pick 50, you know. Yeah. So that that's sort of what I, I started telling myself is, you know, maybe they just didn't watch it to the end, which which was also the gamble. But I couldn't, I tried to make it into a 13 minute film and it, it wasn't any good. It was really, it needed to be slow and yeah. it needed to be that yeah. length. Yeah. I mean, did you, yeah, I mean, did you think that you were taking a, a bit of a risk just in the, the film that it is, uh, you know, you've got films like say, call me by your name and, 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 and other recent mm -hmm. films that, that typically have much younger, um, Sort of protagonists whereas uh, this deals with very similar issues but it also kind of mixes in that that sense of loneliness and as you said regret that that, that comes with with being an, an older person so was that a bit was, was it was it a hard sell and did you manage to get a lot of people on board with that i i was very fortunate because everybody was on board with the idea i think i think people were moved by the script i think they wanted to um they wanted to to work on it you know the the, the thing is we never talk about we never talk about homosexuality and we never talk about you know the elderly and homosexuality or what it was like for them back then and and how you if you wanted to fit into society's standards how you had to hide that part of yourself and um and you're right we talk about the sexy aspects of it the younger you know the younger generations and but we never talk about these these um this 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 particular generation you know where religion had a had a lot of control over over the population in general but especially women so i felt you know and i did a lot of research and i couldn't find much about um about women i found a lot about men but i couldn't find much about women mm -hmm. which which to me tells a lot you know yeah and i did you did you find at all uh, that uh, there's a sort of stigma around films with with an older cast? Uh, I, I don't know if the 
the the term has been coined over in Canada as well, but we called it the the, the grey pound over in the UK. Um, and it's it's I, I guess this sort of generalisation that films with older characters tend to only appeal to older audiences. Uh, did you find that with this film, or were you kind of worried that that would be the case? I don't I don't tend to think about those things, um, you know, because I'm. I'm also an actress and I, I'm tired of, of, of only seeing, you know, younger women on screen. I want to see women who have had like fulfilling lives, who, who don't look like 25 year old models. I want to see women who have, who have depth and who have something to say. And I want to see women suffering on, on the screen. That's, that's what I'm passionate about. So and that's what's really touching to me right now is this nomination tells me that I'm not the only one who's touched by this. I'm not the only one who maybe yearns to see these stories come to the screen. So I, it's very encouraging to me yes. what's happening right now. I mean, do you, do you still think there's a long way to go in terms of uh, fair representation in, in cinema or are we, are we kind of at the point where we're, where we're there now? I think things are changing. I really do think things are changing um, in, in TV series and in films in general. I find we're, we're bringing to the screen women who uh, are getting are, are older, more complex characters. I do think I do think that people want to see more of that. But we're also stuck in this. You know, it's it's very particular because we are stuck in this idea that we have to stay beautiful and young. And that young is sexy and getting older is not sexy. But then, you know, you have Ellen Mirren, who's the sexiest woman alive and and she's not 25, you know. So I, I do think that I do think that things are changing. It's taking it's slowly changing, but it is. So I guess, you know, you're going to be busy over the next few weeks with Oscar events, I'm sure. But but, you know, win or not, um, what's next for, for you in the film? I think that once you get nominated, um, I think Shorts TV is doing a tour with the five nominated films. That's cool. Um, yeah, that's really cool. And uh, that's that's great. And then, you know, we have a few more festivals. Um, I mean, Marguerite's been <clears throat> it's been doing the festival run for over over a year now. So uh, hopefully this this will get more people interested in in um presenting it in their festivals yeah fingers crossed you know yeah Yeah. i I hope so um uh, yeah what's next for you then have you got anything else in the pipeline at the moment i'm working on a feature film i'm uh, looking for financing right now awesome for a feature film i'm I'm been working on for a while and i also have another short film that i am working on hopefully shooting both this year depending on if i I can get financing or not but uh yeah it's really exciting this this has um it's put a lot of uh yeah a lot of wood in the fire as we (laughs) say here in Quebec I'm honestly I'm open to I just want to do good content I just you want to work my craft and and work with creative and talented people and and have and work on incredible content you know Mm. that's really important to me and to try and make a difference in the world yeah. world with my little you know my little project here <laughs> yeah um so i guess <laughs> if you if you could now say so you're you're at the oscars you're surrounded by like, like hundreds of of the, the the most successful people in hollywood if you could hand pick who you would want to work with on your next film who would it be i would say vigo mortensen interesting yeah yeah, it's weird because he's nominated as well, but he's really, I've always been a huge fan of his and, I, and I've heard from people who's worked with him that he's very, um, he's very uh, content oriented. It's really important for him. Uh, so I feel like we would probably have the same kind, hold on, I'm getting a phone call. Uh, <laughs> sure. We would probably have the same kind of, um, of yeah, I, I, I think we would, we, we would probably work really well together. 